Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back, me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learned the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? What the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, that's the status. Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar Al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. 
This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. Forty-seven. Come in. Forty-seven. Do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. I'm in position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. On behalf of his world, it's very secure, right? Yes, sir. So if someone came in here to... Hello there. ...steal something.
You look well, sir. guard assigned a code name Pinky. I got word that he entered the building, but he hasn't reported for duty yet. Probably still down at the depot, getting his uniform. I just hope he's got his papers with him. I heard rumors that he used to work for that Dawood Rangan. You know, the Bollywood producer who died. Doesn't sound promising. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Stuyvesant is expecting a replacement guard. If you can locate him, we should be able to get within strangling distance of the little worm. Look, this is gonna make me look really bad. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Don't you worry. A colleague is also out there looking. But this is awful. I mean, I mean... My boxers and you are a woman. It's just so embarrassing. Oh, it's nothing I haven't seen before. supposed to be ready and present my papers half an hour ago. She's just waiting for a chance. I think I can open that window remotely. Scan the lock with your camera and I'll have a try.
Hey, is anyone there? Come on. Okay. Hmm. Reporting for duty. About time. Our client has been going out of his mind waiting for you. Do you have the papers? Yes. Good. I'll call him now. How should I address him? It's classified. So, you don't call him anything. But officially, he's just known as codename Pinky. Sir, this is security. Hello, sir. Just calling to let you know your new guard has finally arrived. Yes, sir. See you soon. Okay. Wait here. He'll be here shortly. Just a heads up. The package is a real ball breaker. He's been here countless times inquiring about where you were. So, don't be surprised if he's high maintenance. But I'm sure you're used to that. It's just a job. I know what you mean, but we run a tight ship here. I expect you to perform your duties with the utmost professionalism. Understood. Right there. That's Marcus Stuyvesant. Providence okay. partner, self-entitled and escort. arrogant little worm. He might not I have look very much, high standards. But he's done more Trust damage to the do world your duty. than you could dream. You have your credentials on you? Sup? Okay. Let's see here. Well, you have been around the world. Mumbai, Italy, France, Japan. This is a very impressive CV. I think you'll do. Okay, walk with me. I need to go through some ground rules. I expect you to be by my side 24 7 unless I say otherwise. Bathroom breaks are, of course, permitted, but only when I say so. I have a very important and delicate meeting today at which I expect you to keep your ears closed but your eyes wide open. Understood? Now, your papers were indeed impressive, but I need to see what you can do with my own eyes. My father used to take me hunting, he was an avid hunter. I personally hated it, but always admired his skill with a knife, and grew to appreciate what it takes to gut an animal. Have you ever tried to gut an animal? Yes. Good. Then you know it's not so easy as it looks. Like trying to stab a rubber ball. It bounces back if you don't stab it correctly. We are almost here. You have to understand. I didn't get to where I am by blind faith. Okay, we are almost there. You see the shooting targets? Any fool can shoot a target. With a knife? No. <laughs> That's where the talent lies. My father always used to say, if you are good with a knife, you're even better with a gun. I want to see your skills. I don't know why, but I've always trusted men who would throw a knife. <laughs> I'm sure a psychiatrist would have a field day with that statement. So, show me what you got. Do well and you work for me. Fail, you 
get out of here, and I never want to see your face again. Let's just hope he's half as good as you are. Only time will tell. But I doubt it. You cocky idiot. Just fine. Okay, I think I got the right man now. What to do Thank you for all your service. That power. And take the rest of the day off. You deserve it. Thank you, sir. It was an honor. Thank you, sir. You impressed me. You really did. But let's get to work. Some things you should know about me. This is very much on a need to know basis. <gasps> Got M47. Marcus Stuyvesant won't be a problem anymore. Let's move on to Carl Ingram. We're not done yet. That's right, 900 hours. And the key cards to activate the alarms are still in the safe in the security room. Yeah, same code. Six, nine, two, seven. Just don't tell your mother I have to shoot her. <laughs> okay. Okay, but remember, you need to activate the alarm on both floors, otherwise nothing's gonna happen. Good. Yeah, I will do. Yeah, have a good shift tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye. Possible intruder. Sweeping area. Over. Come on. Huh? How are you, sir? Please stay back. That's Carl Ingram, Providence partner and brass bald billionaire. A legendary political fixer, Ingram is old money and as rotten as they come. Two of us are stationed up here and below by the card reader. 
We get an alert, we both swipe our cards, and bingo. Lockdown. Well, what if the other guard is using the bathroom? Well, it's time, but so if that should happen, I should be able to run down and activate the other swipe as well. But I guess that will need a little practice. <sighs> Happy to not be at work tomorrow. Sounds like a lot of running around. It's what we're paid to do. Yeah, and it'll probably never happen. Just like fire drills. Just like fire drills. Need to act fast before those bastards evacuate. Head for the helipad. I'm Give sorry. it to me. All clear. We Standing by. Evacuation today. We thought it was scheduled tomorrow. If you don't think this is a drill, use the emergency parachute in your rooms. Could... They've left the helipad. Their last chance is by parachute. Make sure that doesn't happen. Will do. Attached Actual. This is Alpha One Actual. Area is clear. Please advise. We're in position, gentlemen. Do not abandon the principal. Keep your cool. Roger that. Copy, command. Still looking. No sign of the perp. Time to step up your... Safe zone. Yeah, continue inside. Someone check that goddamn exit. Okay, okay, okay. The idea is down. We got number 47. Soon there will be no more Providence. And you need to find an exit. Nothing Our business here, is done here, but it's far Moving from on. over. Stay sharp!
That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look, you don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did, she'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlisle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the Constant. Information that may be helpful in his recapture. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. 
the revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlisle. Please, could you go and find out what that was? Sure thing. Thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and... And, and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just cry. Are you washing Patrick's car again? Sir, we're doing a stop and search here. Please comply if you need to get through. Won't take a second, sir. Thank you. Please proceed. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments, or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle 
are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem Hello, affected sir. by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be... relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious today, about sir? the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done Looking with good the crime today, scene. Sir. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? 
Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? I don't die from boredom. I fear I may not survive an entire weekend in this shithole. Perhaps a brisk walk in the garden would do you good. I said speed up time, not my passing. Now just go away, will you? Of course, sir. I'll come back later. How very kind of you, dear Mr. Phonesby. I hoped... <laughs> um, you are invading my How's personal space. Along, so, very well, Mr. Phonesby. Make sure you focus on your work. I Patrick Carlyle. Don't one more maid cry Can you tell me kitchen. where you were so yesterday evening? Around, young Mr. Patrick. Shit, don't worry about that me. that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, rosy uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexa used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. It's bloody rouge, that's what it is. Making us come Rebecca Carla, to play funeral and then can you tell me about yesterday evening? Straight. We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I'm telling you, I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. 
On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger bore. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Tanned. I bet Mother spent the last week at her Cypress estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all... I... Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me.
I shouldn't go. But that Emma woman is a tad too busy for my taste. What is it? She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she preferred. <laughs> Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. I except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Too right she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. This is everywhere. I never thought. Jeannie is a great lass. You love her, she loves you. And now a wee one on the way. What is it now? Elaine's daughter on the top floor, stroking the door of the electric. I'm a professional. No need to worry. I got this. Okay. Okay, I'll just stay right here. Hello, sir. Painkillers. Lethal, if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Must have 
incredibly dangerous situation. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. Hi there. On top of things. That is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. She's calm as ice. It's just not natural. Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder, I'm telling you.
Well? Well? Well, what did you find? Ah. Uh. Yates better well have a damn good reason for not being here in person. Christ! You really don't have a clue, do you? I'm talking about that weasel Arthur Edwards. Can we get back what he stole from me? So far, it looks like we can't. All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted the arrangements our office worked years to put in place. That's why Don Yates should be here. He made the arrangements. He should bloody well be the one to clean up this whole mess. I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger, Alexa. Please, continue your efforts, Mr. Ford. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. Excuse me, sir. Seems like you're not cleared to come through here. Sorry. Hey, how are you? I'm ready to present my conclusion. Very well. Let's talk in my office.
Greetings, sir. Looking good, man. Looking good. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. The butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. Hmm. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlisle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I'll send you an invoice. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. I trust you'll see yourself out. I need some privacy. Thank you. What the? Ugh!
recovering it. Uh, it's got real soul. First time here? Yep. Yeah, it's impressive, all right. A safe in Madame Carla's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Greetings, sir. Financial decisions revoked and a freeze on Rebecca. the... And then you give me that token for the vault in London. But only one of two. You need to explain. The token for the bank vault is just a contingency measure. I doubt you'll need it. Christ, Mother, that's exactly what I mean. Could you be more cryptic? I am working very hard to figure everything out. I need you to back off and trust that I'm in control. I have contingency plans and will make sure that you get information. I need time to focus. <laughs> Business as usual, then. You are cold, Mother. And alone. By choice. Did you give the Fitzpatrick token to Madame Carlyle's daughter? Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her? That sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler. Oh, of course. Everywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No power, no portrait. Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. Uh, she expects the family photo to be done any moment now. I need this shoot to happen, okay? And I need it to be perfect. Can't, can't we just take a fuse from another fuse box? Uh, 
I, I guess we could do that. This seriously needs to step into this century. It's not safe at all. If this was back home, it would be a lawsuit waiting to happen. Frank is busting our balls out here too. Sounds like the power's back up. Why don't you take a picture to test it? It works. I'm ready for the shoot. Perfect. I'll call the family down now then. Excellent, 47. Madame Carlyle is on her way down for the family photo shoot. Let's see if any memorable moments will play out in front of the camera. Right ahead, please. Hi, good afternoon. I expect you to be efficient. I have a lot to see to today. I'll do my best. I wonder if he does headshots. That's what she does. Create precise order in all her affairs, never letting coincidence touch her. Down by the fountain. Wait for everyone to show up. Right, get in position. Let's get this over with. Chin up, Edward. No one wants to look at that long face. You're such an idiot, Gregory. I'm fine, Rebecca. Fine? You look like a nose wreck. Stop! Bickering. Well, Mother, you certainly know how to lighten the mood. A 
Could we have one more? We're having such a jolly good time, aren't we? Just take the picture. We don't have all day. Yeah, me here. Just checking out a strange sound. Over. Could we have one more? We're having such a jolly good time, aren't we? There's a puddle of water here. Well, never mind. Let's just get this done, shall we? Mission complete. Well done, 47. Forty-seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. 
You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. been compromised. Abort and walk away now. Who? ICA. They tracked me. Don't know how. It's what they do. How many? One prime asset and a whole pack of up-and-comers. They've infiltrated the club searching for us. Christ, I think I killed one of them. Get out now before they spot you. No. They found us once. They'll find us again. <sighs> Keep your head down. I'll take care of this. Be the tree. No, no trace of our target yet. Yes, ma'am. I will. Agent I always Price. by the book. You don't have to worry about that. Hello? Hello? Crap. This is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Just keep trying, Agent Montgomery. Our client considers Agent 47 and Olivia Hall as a serious threat. You can't underestimate them. I never do, Joe. We'll find them. We're all in position. Good. Report back to me if there's anything. Don't worry.
Oh god. Swan here. All quiet so far. He's here. He has to be. Don't get comfortable. Agent Swan. Huh? Ring the doorbell at the drop off. Wouldn't have killed the guy to meet me outside. or you'll get sloppy. And clearly, he's not making that mistake. Is that a trunk or a hope? Yeah, I can't let you pass. I'm sorry, sir. You've got to be kidding me.
Stay here. Have a cigarette or something. Tim's calling in. Only got visual on stoned idiots. No sign of target. Stay alert. We don't need to give him an opportunity to strike. Agent Tim. You'll be the laughing stocks of the ICA. Get your asses in gear, man. How hard can it be?
real soldiers do their job. I got my message. Where are you? Diner. Up the main road. On my way.
You're hurt. You should see the other guy. Never killed nobody before. What you did back there. You really are all Gray said you'd be. 47. He didn't suffer, did he? He made it count. but not broken. I'm glad. It's time we start afresh, you and me. Get to the point. You and your friends pulled off the impossible. You stormed the heavens, took down the untouchables, and yet, here we are. Status quo. It just goes to show, you can't fight power, Miss Burnwood. Power never dies, it only changes hands. The best you can do is claim it. I never cared about power. Power is a tool, Miss Burnwood. It's the thing that gets you to the thing. As the next constant, you can be the agent of change. Transform the system from the inside, or be transformed by it. No risk, no reward. I'll need to think about it. No, you won't. The real question is, what will you bring to the table? Sir. I'm telling you, the file is trash. The Constant doesn't so much burn his bridges as blow them up. Arthur Edwards, whoever he was, don't exist anymore. His personal data somehow deletes itself from any system that records him. Way beyond advanced. The partners spared no expense to make sure their controller would be untraceable. How untraceable? Look. I did what you asked, but Gray's gone, and I'm no Diana. I'm not who you need right now. You gotta be kidding me. I see, eh? I used every encryption known to men. Who are these guys? The best. It's only a matter of time before they get lucky. We need to take them down. <sighs> you and which army? I know where the agency stores its files, mission reports, client data. If we leak it to the public. You want to whistleblow the ICA? It's the path of least resistance. Turns out, you are who I need right now, Olivia. I do this, and I'm out. So, what are we breaking into? Data facility in Chongqing, China. Run by a man called Hush. Of course. The ICA site in Chongqing houses the agency's data storage and analyst division. Needless to say, security is daunting. The state-of-the-art server vault is biometrically wired to the facility's two overseers. Imogen Royce, behavioral analysis pioneer, and Hush, a data security guru with a taste for fringe transhuman experimentation. Tell me about Hush. A former cyber terrorist for the Ministry of State Security in Kadanyang who fled his country after one of the Poe regime's periodic purges. He made a career doing cybersecurity for dark web deplorables, human traffickers, organ harvesters, scum like him, with no code or conscience. ICA sure can pick him. No offense. Can you disable security? A dual authentication protocol ensures that any handling of data must be directly authorized by Hush and Royce. The proverbial human factor device to make the system impenetrable. Luckily, I found a loophole. If both overseers should unexpectedly die within a short space of time, 
the system reverts to a temporary fail-safe protocol, which I can bypass. Take them off the board, and you'll have free access to the data core. And I'll handle the rest. And you're sure it'll work? Look, I know, Hush. If I'm wrong, we won't live long enough to regret it. All right. I will leave you to prepare. Chongqing, China. This city is Big Brother's wet dream with more than 2.5 million families covering 15 million people. Privacy is a four-letter word in this place. It's pretty ironic that a cloak and dagger organization like the ICA keeps its most valuable secrets here. You'll find Hush conducting his fringe experiments in an abandoned apartment building. While Imogen Royce, the archivist, runs the day-to-day -day business of the ICA data facility. I just hope you know what you're doing, 47. Have you had a look inside that room? You can learn so much about someone from what they keep around, and that guy's a real Either he's a robot, or he's missed his calling as a housekeeper. It's pretty damn sterile in there. Well, that's disappointing. I gotta say... Are you serious? No way you're entering. Now you know you can't be here, so leave. Hello, Mr. Pritchard. I've just learned that your plane will be delayed beyond the lifetime of the entry code you received for the facility. For your convenience, we've set up the new code to be 0118 to match the one for the apartment. I hope you enjoy your stay. Hi, Chanting here. Mr. Pritchard, I'm just calling to tell you to bring your P41 for the facility tour. Thank you. 
Mr. Pritchard, I just read your report and share your concerns regarding facility leadership behavior. I fully back your decision to inspect, and I would appreciate updates on your initial findings as they come in. Good job. Oh, you got new menus. I had no idea. Uh, do you still have the, uh, sorry, what? Right, yeah, uh, just some sparkling water is fine. So, do you, oh, <laughs> sorry, they're right here. Yeah, so I'd like to get some soup dumplings. Right, sorry, yeah, with the crab. Uh, and how about some of those, shit, what are they called, the, the crispy ones? Yes, those, perfect. You know what? I'll get a double order and uh, a plate of the pork bao buns. No way.
Please stand back. I'll check it out. Good. I totally understand. No. So drop it. I did. There are still a few kinks to work out, but I have some ideas. System online. <sighs> Got it working. My family would be so proud. It doesn't feel right. I don't think I want to do it. If I do this, I can give my family a future. I have to do it. But... I'm ready to experiment. Oh, good. I'll let Hush and Sister Lay know. You're done for now. Come on. decided to go ahead with it. You know, you're gonna be a part of something truly amazing. He's a genius, Hush. And this is groundbreaking research. It's an honor, really. But, so, um, he's under a lot subject. of pressure these days, so if you could just go along with it, okay? Yes. Don't We're try about to, to perform resist the, final the impulses test of he this sends. Project phase. I don't want him to. That's him. Hush the bastard. Wow, he looks a lot older. Sit down. Ready when you are. Junli, let's start at 100% signal strength. No. I mean, no, there's no need. The subject is clean, cooperative. I was thinking 25% and then adjust if necessary. 60% is minimum. We'll get no motor control below, and I'm not wasting my time. But... 60. Log concluding experiment H109 initiated. Run calibration 60%. Signal strength 60% confirmed. H109 initiated. Load suggestion. Motor control. 44.1. Execute.
the signal's too low. The signal's too weak. We'll get nothing like this. Go to 100%? It's not safe. You've been working too hard. With your condition, it can cause you real physical harm. It's safe. You're strong. You can overcome it. 100%. Do it. Log, continuing experiment H109. Run calibration 100%. Signal strength 100% confirmed. H109 initiated. Now I'll see you dance. Identify impulse string. Load suggestion motor control 44.1. Execute. It's too low. He's got spirit. I can get to him. Just need to focus. Abort! You're going too far. No, he's on the verge to break him. Go higher. It'll kill him. It's already way beyond reasonable intensity. This subject is... Normally resistant. He's no match for hush. Nothing worth shit ever came to be without pain. I'm calling it quits, hush. You need rest. Okay, okay. A short break. I'll return with a clear head. God damn that assistant. If they'd up the signal, it will kill him. Stay here, okay? Don't even think about getting cold feet again, please. I'm here to the end. Right. I'm so glad you decided to go ahead with it. You know, you're gonna be a part of something truly amazing. And this is groundbreaking research. Oh, Royce. Hush. Remind me why we need these meetings. Don't you have better things to do? Don't I have better things to do? You mean than handling all your responsibilities over here? While well, you do God knows what. Yes, I do. We've been over this. My SPD forbids me to experience too much sensory stimuli. What's that in the background? What are you doing over there? I don't believe for one second that you're not spending every waking moment on your pet project. You just focus on your little drones and your algorithms. Good, 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 good. And this level of incompetence. I'm going downstairs to see Sister Lay. I need some cheering up.
Hey, bud. Sorry, sir. I cannot let you through. I've got my orders. People like him are nothing but waste. No participation, no agency. No worse to anyone, us. Where's Jun Li? Never mind her. I'll take over. Let's pick it up where we left off, Sister Lei. At the same signal strength. Yes, 100%. I feel strong. I can take him. Take a seat. Log, continuing experiment H109. Run calibration 100%. Signal strength 100% confirmed. H109 initiated. Now I'll see you do as I can. Identify impulse string. Load suggestion motor control 44.1. Exit. We need to go higher. Come on! Ah! Oh, my head. You'll get nowhere like this. I... don't understand. No one's ever resisted like this before. Let's increase the signal and get some results. What do you say, Hush? Do 120%. 120. Good. Let's do it. Log, continuing experiment, H109. Run calibration, 120%. H109 continued. 120% signal strength confirmed. Yes. This is it. It's all incredibly sharp. I feel my mind expanding. Identify impulse string. Load suggestion. Motor control. 44.1. Execute. I... I feel power. I'm not scared of you. I could... You got the bastard, Hush. Hush! Now go get Imogen Don't Royce and we can get to the core. Get up. Get up. Don't you fucking die on me. But this isn't a waiting room.
Officer, you're not allowed here. What's going on in that noodle place? Ah, my knee is so sore. Hello? Hello? Zero one something eighteen. Oh, yes, got it. Zero one one eight. Welcome. Please follow the grey line to security check. Thank you. There's no way you're getting through that door 47. It only opens for people with an authentic security clearance. The signal is encrypted. Without a dongle, we can't hack it. If you use your camera, you can hack that panel. Security protocol overruled. Hmm. Access granted.
You're not clear to pass this point, Chef. Yeah, like he said. Access denied. Access granted. Denied. You don't have clearance. Access denied. Oh, I think I slept maybe two hours last night. Two and a half. Oh, I'm in the same boat. I went out and bought some of those Valerian capsules, but have you ever had those? They smell like human feet. Well, I don't think sleeping pills are gonna help with the stress at all. Well, maybe I, I should try yoga or, or join one of those Tai Chi groups. Yeah, the holistic approach isn't really my thing, but I guess there's no harm in trying.
All right there. Imogen Royce. Quite the bitch, apparently. Nothing wrong with their look, though. Edgy. I just don't feel comfortable with Royce knowing intimate. The breaks are stressing me out. I know she's all about Good. Hey, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not like she's posting on Nice. Well, I could see with she just break. likes to keep track. Security protocol overruled. My neck is really tense. I've been on drone duty. Just don't see how Royce does it. She can't possibly guess stuff like that. I told no one about my cat. Aren't you on that big social media platform? I'm not sure you have any privacy. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Again and again today. I should have stayed in bed. Hmm? Lovely. <laughs> Man, ah, oh, crap. Oh, this guy's got some moves. Both targets down. Good. 
Just give me a second, and I'm in. You can now access the core, 47. Sorry, sir. Got orders. Can't let you through. Sorry for the inconvenience. Royce knew Vincent's girlfriend was breaking up with him. Sealing the room and dimming the windows 47. No need to worry about intruders. Every hit the ICA ever sanctioned, enough to shut them down for good. But first you need to locate all files referencing Diana and yourself. at you. I don't know. I get why you want to protect her. So, why pull the data referring to the two of you from their system before we publish the rest? Okay, good. I've set up a link to an information non-profit site. When you press that button, it's up there and the whole world will know. There's no undo 47. This will shut the ICA down for good. You really okay with this? It's who you've been for so long. Maybe it's time for a change. I'll just return things to normal. No need to alert them we were here prematurely. Safety through the detected. Lockdown. Shit. I missed that. We're blown 47. I can hold the doors for a little while. Use the fence to get out. Go. Now. All personnel. Breach protocol initiated. This is bad. That means they'll shoot on sight. 
I'm gonna create some havoc, 47. Trade the Corel down. Maybe we'll divert their attention a bit. Warning. Core overheating. Warning. Core shut down. Temperature critical. Warning. Fire detected. Protocol initiated. Anybody copy? No sign of any pup. What on? Warning. Core overheating. Detected. Anybody copy? No sign of any pup. Moving on. Command. Nothing in my position. Over. Oh shit. to the data leak bombshell causing shockwaves across the world, the so-called ICA files. The disclosure
disclosure of a... You win. So... What happens now? The ball's in your court, Miss Burnwood. I do have other candidates, you know. Most of whom have never tied me to a chair. You've seen the news. That was 47 acting on his own. He is untethered. He is unstoppable. And he cannot be bargained with. He will find you, Mr. Edwards. And I'm the only chance you've got. I'm listening. 47 has one weakness. Me. Found something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Harold. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates, of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, if you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constance's most trusted aide. She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No, you won't. Because you're not an idiot. Let's just humor him. Yates likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. Not unless you wanted to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my sight for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47.
Oh my gosh, be careful. The ground's super loose here. Ready, Pam? Three, two, one. Bam. I think it must be over the moon about telling this stuff again. You've been living alone here. Bienvenidos to Viñeda Yates, senor. May I see your invitation, please? Gracias, senor. Enjoy the party. Hi! Evening, senor. Thank God it's finally here. Tamara Vidal. I'm here for the tour, it seems. Ah, yes. Miss Vidal. My apologies. I didn't recognize you. Let me sign you in. Luther, Burnwood's flying solo. I want all eyes on. Let's see what she does. And Luther, please deploy the birds and key in on the party area. We're spread too thin, too many blind spots. Anyone as much as sneeze in the wrong direction, I want to know about it. So this state's chief winemaker. Well, this is a rare privilege. You and Don Yates must be very close. Yes, about 400 meters, I should say. Pardon me? Never mind. I'll just wait here for my companion. Carry on. That's Don Yates' fixer from New York. That is cool. Corvo, got a message from the boss. Duty calls. Let me guess, the Burnwood woman. That's right. Yates has arranged for the chief winemaker to take Burnwood and Tamara Vidal on a grand tour of the estate. Wants you to tag along. Not for my sparkling personality. This Burnwood woman sure has his panties in a twist. Wonder what the deal is. Yates' business is his business. Just get yourself ready and sign into the visitor center. Oh, have a drink on my behalf. I don't drink. It makes me sentimental. A private tour of the estate. Diana, Vidal, and this fixer, Corvo Black. Black is a threat, but also an opportunity. Yates's own machinations are inconsequential. Joining the tour will give access to Vidal, away from the crowd. Telling me what I'm. Okay. Nothing yeah. quite spoils a party Excellent. like your guests. In fact, a couple of spots come to mind. On the tour hey after. Hey, stand by. So you're not sure yet? Does that mean there's a plan A? One where I don't stand a 50 50 chance of getting caught? I mean, you do realize the risk here, boss. Broad daylight, workers around. Who exactly is this boss? It's a nice gesture, but a bit hubristic when you yeah, say right. he's not even been appointed. But if I'm going to be one of these heralds, because you need to start letting me in on a few things. Okay. So who's this for? <laughs> nah, no problem. I just never framed an urban legend before. Very post true. Yeah, I like it. Who is throwing stuff around here? Come on! Come on. No! No! No!
Hello there. Hello there. And welcome. Corval Black. I'm on the tour. Right. Mr. Black. Welcome. Miss Burnwood and Miss Vidal will meet you down by the winefields. I trust you know the way. I can find my way around. Enjoy the tour. One of the most gifted surveillance specialists ever to graduate. You asked me, the constant must have lost his mind. Burnwood was in league. Over here. You two must be Burnwood and Vidal. And you must be Yates's garbage man. Sorry, but I didn't catch your name. This is Corvo Black, Tamara. He's a ICA regular. I only work with the best. Well, we're all here, it seems. Except for our guide, the chief winemaker. Looks like we're stuck here until someone fetches him. Mr. Black, I'm looking in your direction. Hold on. I'll track him down. boy. Do try and bring him back in one piece. Counterintuitive as that may be. That was a bit rude. Yes, the man yes it was. Patron, Senor Vargas. What? What is he now? What? You have some guests waiting. Senor Yates wanted you to give them the grand tour, remember? As if I don't have more important things to do than babysit Yates' socialized friends. It's only harvest season. Better do what he says, Patron. Big shot New York lawyer like that. Don't want to get on his bad side. Well, I'm not going anywhere until I have decided if the crop is right for picking. Bring me the three Malbec grapes to taste, Ramon. If Yates doesn't like how I prioritize, he can weigh me down with concrete and toss me off a bridge. How's that? <sighs> Three grapes, was it? I'll get my picking knife. I don't know, I think I... Shame about your boy Leandro throwing his knee out yesterday. in a hotel room with this woman. I swear to you that I, I didn't do anything to her. No, not that I know, you know. Uh, so, but I love you, I love you so much. I want you to... I don't have a collection of that. You have to be <laughs> Oh, 
<coughs> Mr. Vargas, I have the three grapes you requested. Yes, now, let's see. A lovely inky black color. A good size, large and firm. Seeds, brown, excellent. And finally, taste. Mm. Sweet, flavorful, robust tannins. Some floral notes. Marvelous. Why, I say these grapes are ripe for harvest. Inform the workers, will you, Ramon? I... I have a third to contact. Will do. Hello, wine lover. Hello. Hey. Welcome to Vineda <laughs> Yates. I do apologize for the delay, but the Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief wine maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. These are busy times. In fact, we're just about to harvest this year's crop. Great expectations. So how do you like Argentina? Mm. Like everywhere else, full of Americans. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. We insist on the steaming every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, our trusty grape crusher. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. I believe Mr. Black here is a jack of all trades. Isn't that so? I dabble. I see. I just thought Yates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been to our vineyard before? Only on business. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes to its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, yeast converts the sugars in the wine to alcohol, in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser before the longer, secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on, do any of you have questions? I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Certainly. Lead the way. What can you tell me about this grape crusher? Well, as the name implies, it crushes the steamed grapes into a thick pulp or must by a powerful rotating cylinder. She is one of the most important appliances in our production pipeline. Have you had any workplace accidents? What? Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp? You'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space, if you ask me. Yes, well, fortunately, we have had none of that. So, if there's no further questions... What? Huh? Isn't someone else supposed to be doing this? Must... turn. What happened to your colleague? Urgent call. Something about work. I don't think she'll be coming back. Oh, well. I'm sure she can find her way out. Let's proceed. Excelente. So let's continue to the barrel room. If you'll follow me. Well. Bueno. 
So, are you associates of Mr. Yates? You might say we run in the same circles. Law and order. Must be very exciting. It's about 99% preparation. Are you enjoying yourself, Mr. Black? It's all very inspiring. I could see you retired to a place like this. Winemaking speaks to your meticulous nature. Surely you don't plan to be Yates's fixer forever. I have been told recently to think about the future. And so we arrived to our final stop, the barrel room. This is where we store the wine during the secondary stage of fermentation. The area behind the glass is where we keep our most precious bottles, including a 1945 Grand Paladin, the most expensive wine in existence. The access doors, which are made from ballistic glass, can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Senor Yates now. I shall leave you in his capable hands. How reassuring. Ah. Miss Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little Herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine herald, once the training wheels are off. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> Why don't you take a break, Corvo? We're done here for now, I think. Oh, but don't go too far. I may still need your services later. I'll be closer than you think. Oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Mr. Yates wants the 1945 Grand Paladin brought up to the house. Special occasion. What? Like a dead alien's land on the front lawn? Have the ghosts of Jesus, John Lennon and Ava Perone, unexpectedly come for dinner? Help me out here. What could possibly be so special? Above your clearance, Flowers. Just fetch it already. A meeting in the root cellar. I'm judging from Yates's choice of wine. Some type of celebration. Likely a gathering of heralds come to congratulate Yates on his upcoming promotion. Diana's presence, a calculated risk. What's the passcode again? Last year of World War II. If you have to look it up, shame on you. Do you need me to call someone?
Valentino. It's just the 19th. Irreplaceable. You don't drink the 1945 Grand Paladin any more than you would write a shopping list on the Mona Lisa. Ugh, men like Don Yates know the price of everything but the value of... What if we exchange the labels? Served him a different wine. Ah, you are devious, Santino. But... If Mr. Yates wishes to destroy something beautiful, I will not stand in his way. That is between him. I what? Hey, Flowers! Over here. Come on, while we're young. Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be bigger. Come on, Flowers. Guests are waiting. Get yourself patted down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs getting offed. Hello there, sir. I'm gonna need to frisk you if you want to come through here. Hey, yo, there's no need to flex. You ain't got to impress me. Okay, man. Vamos. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool-gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. They're already at it. Go on, place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. Pardon me. I have always considered the Heralds the unspoken heroes. Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. 
This is the 1945 Grand Paladin, one of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary, the proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot, the wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, oh, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend, Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood! And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom! Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Absolutely. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. Yes. Perhaps Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. What? Did you say? You're lying, of course, which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? Yes. 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 I agree. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. Yeah, hey! We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue Agent 47. Revenge for her change in size. That out. Oh, yeah, I get it.
We might have a possible disturbance. I'm moving to investigate. Good. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction... Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping the crime scene like we discussed. Remote, staged accident. Cortazar will bring the package. Get it done. Miss Burnwood. You rolled out the red carpet just for me. Don, you shouldn't have. So confident, even in defeat. I suppose you're not used to danger, always safe behind your screens. Just tell me one thing before we part ways. Why me? Why you? Why would Edwards trust you? Please. It will keep me awake at nights, and I'm 65. I get up four times to piss as it is. Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale and it's eating him up. He needs to win. Full, unequivocal victory. My recruitment was just the feather in his cap. By the way, you were right about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. Holy shit! Huh? <laughs> this woman will be your downfall. If it's no. a consolation, Don, what are you doing, you asshole? Alone. Don't just stand there! Constant. Shoot her! And I will uh. make it my mission to tear down Providence brick by brick. Uh. Uh. Finish it. Uh. Well done, 47. Uh. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh, and dress appropriately.
of low-level bureaucrats. of Kronstadt. I dare say congratulations are in order. Forty-seven. It's done. Now, we strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Ether Brand's neurotoxin transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent. Still clinging on to your self-image. Agent 47, the Apex Predator. Always hiding.
hiding behind the headlines. Was perfection its own justification? Or a willful distraction? A wall built contract by contract to shield you from the uncomfortable truth. You're exactly the tool they bred you to be. <laughs> Quite a piece of work you are. How could you possibly function on your own? You never even had a name. Until I gave you one. That's him. Burnwood never ceases to surprise me. You really are a most singular individual. And to think, she wanted me to put you down. Lucky for you, I never throw away anything useful. Prepare the serum. Forgetting's not so bad. You've done it before. What's he doing? Is he still looking at us? I'm afraid so. Poor Sap just won't accept his days are done. Perhaps I should take him out to the woods and set him free. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> he was a loyal tool. But everything goes the way of the horse and cart eventually. I couldn't agree more. Are you done? The toxins are playing into your fears. Don't let them. Come on. You've got to get your head straight. She wants me dead. She has every right to after what we did. But that's not what is really going on. She chose power. In the end, she was just like them. No. She found a way to turn Edward's own cleverness against him. The rest is up to you. I don't know how. You do know. Diana! Coming! Once you dispose of Edward's, I will dismantle Providence from the top down. It will finally be over. All you have to do is embrace the past. We need to find a catchy name for it. For when we go commercial, I mean. You figure this thing has commercial applications? Who'd want to have their minds wiped? Not wiped, obviously. But that's just fine-tuning. Okay, right now, the serum erases long and short-term memory banks wholesale. 
but in a couple of cycles, we'll be able to isolate the effects to individual memories. Imagine if you could pluck out childhood traumas, ugly breakups, combat trauma. You guys should be over the moon. What are you talking about? I love waking up in a cold sweat with a scream stuck in my throat. So, what would you call it then? Catchy, off-the-counter name. I don't know. Blank Slaterzine? You are a piece of work, lady. Come on. Jim, was it? It always starts like this. GPS, microwaves, duct tape. This serum will eventually improve lives. I've got to believe that. Tell that to the poor SOB in the rear car. Nah. When I want to forget something, I rely on my good old pal, Mr. Al Cahal. No offense. Last time I saw weather like this, I was doing extreme conditions training near the army base.
Ether Corporation bought this train for sample backup storage. But since the bombing at the R&D site in Johannesburg, they're refitting the cars as a mobile train. Somewhere in Romania. We're on a loop from Zagreb to Irkutsk. Isn't that risky?
When is the... Uh... Ridiculous, if you ask me.
don't suppose there's any point calling for help. No. Seems I brought this on myself. Well played, Miss Burnwood. Do you really think she'll be able to resist all that power? This is not how people work. She rejects the power, not the responsibility. <laughs> A noble idea. But please join me in the real world. I trust you already know what this is. Why not simply take it? Embrace who you were always meant to be. No, never again. <sighs> well, I had to try. Go on then. Do your thing. At least I die knowing who I am. What are you doing? No! No! This is what it means to lose everything. You're making a mistake. It's mine to make. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me. I seem to have, uh... What were we talking about? Don't worry. We were done. resignations at the top level of international finance continues as Milton Fitzpatrick CEO Alexander Fannin joins the president of Hamden Oil, while the new founder Tim Quinn and a bunch of other members step down. It's been a long time. Agent 47. That's not who I am anymore. The pact is done. The past. Death. And yet, here you are. I choose this path because I can. There will always be people like them. So there will always be people like us. No one is untouchable. It's good to be back. 